Bryce Cutter with the OH Report here on a beautiful football Friday night, afternoon, evening. The Fredericktown Freddies and the East Knox Bulldogs going out of the Bulldogs looking to avenge their loss last week, but they will have to get through the Fredericktown Freddies vying for a position in a competitive K-Mac conference. I've got special guest Dan Scott, a University of Urbana defensive back here with me tonight on color commentary. It's going to be a great one. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram pregame show coming up next. Are you ready for the comeback? At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. with the Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram pregame show. We've got a beautiful one coming your way, 67 degrees and sunny at game time here. Taking a look at the band for East Knox. We've got Dan Scott with on color commentary with me. Dan, how you doing? Outstanding. Thanks for having me today, Bryce. Thank you very much. And of course, like I said during that intro, Dan Scott, you used to play at the University of Urbana at defensive back, and you held a record, correct? Yeah, actually, when I was there, I held the record for most passes broken up uh, was 26 in the season, in a career, actually, excuse me. Um, but it was great, great experience. Um, lifelong friends uh, I met there. Uh, so it was great institution. And bringing your experience and your expertise here to the OH Report, we are very excited to have you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Fredericktown team spotlight. Fredericktown this season, two and two in the conference, three and four overall record, coached by Coach Will Hartley. Passing this season, they're 44 97, a 45% completion rating with 699 passing yards, eight passing touchdowns, and 10 interceptions on the season. Rushing for 245 carries, 982 yards, and five rushing touchdowns. Take a look at the defense for the Freddies. Let's take a look at the player spotlight. We've got Blake. Sipes, the quarterback in defense, is back. He's a sophomore this season. He's got 670 passing yards and seven passing touchdowns. But he's also a dual threat, 500 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns in two games with over 100 rushing yards this season so far. We'll take a second for the national anthem.
National Anthem performed by the East Knox Bulldogs Marching Band. Let's take a look at the Fredericktown Freddies key to victory for this game. Let's take another look at Blake Sipes. Another look at the video here. Quick jump pass into the end zone completion. Slides out, looks in a deep bomb for a beautiful jumping catch all the way to the house. We see the passing strength of Blake Sipes. This time taking, taking it himself, sees the open space and moves towards it. A huge pickup all the way into the end zone. One last look here. Some of Sipes' excellence this season. Rolls out to his right, finds a receiver in traffic and barrels his way all the way into the end zone. Fredericktown is going to be neutralized the rush. We see the dual threat of Blake Elliott and Aaron White in the backfield for the Bulldogs. If you want to be successful, you have got to neutralize those rushing plays and no low plays. You cannot take a play off against a very gifted team such as East Knox. We've seen them fully dominate teams before. Try and keep this competitive, frustrate them, and take them into the late game with a competitive score. Now let's take a look at the East Knox Bulldogs team spotlight passing this season. They're throwing 58 for 111, a 52% completion rate, 748 passing yards, seven passing touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Rushing, they have 251 carries for 1,411 yards. That's 5.6 yards per carry, and 14 rushing touchdowns. Really been their bread and butter this year. For our player spotlight, we have Aaron White. We've certainly featured Blake Elliott a lot, and deservedly so, but there's another man in that backfield making a difference. 58 carries, 310 yards, one rushing touchdown and on defense. He has 42 tackles tied for third most on the team. Now let's take a look at the Bulldogs. Keys to victory, short memory, of course, it was a tough loss, but this is a, still a very strong football team going into the late parts of the season. You can't let small challenges really hold you down as you continue to compete for that championship. And with Danville coming up in Week 10, you want to reassert yourself as the strong team in this conference. Maybe it was a difficult game against Northmore, but you can still make your mark on these teams. And taking a look here, so we got some sense, got some look at both teams before the game. What are you thinking, Dan? So basically what I can tell you, what I have saw is some athletes, some true athletes on the field here, just through warm-ups, you know, guys making plays, showing how they're patient with their uh, athletic abilities. So great great look at the teams this, uh, that, this evening. So um, looking to see some true athletes out here. And you were taking a look at some of the games beforehand in preparation. And with East Knox, you really saw that the bread and butter for the Bulldogs was that run game. What do you think m is making them so successful in that regard? So basically what I'm seeing is lots of patience. Lots of patience when it comes to getting to the outside, waiting for those blockers to get in position so they can make that move upfield. Uh, and you see these guys, they're running definitely north and south. Yes, very much so. And on the defensive side of things, we see, you know, guys like Blake Elliott. And you were telling me you were impressed with his tackling ability. Yeah, he, he's definitely one of those linebackers that you've got to have back there that's not afraid to get in and put his nose in there. He's definitely filling the holes, shedding blockers, um, taking on linemen, doing everything that you expect a strong linebacker to do. Not really caring about having a clean helmet at the end of the season, <laughs> right? Going all about those war marks. Very much so. And for the Freddies, what were you seeing there? So on the Freddies, on the offensive side of the ball, definitely saw a, a, a lot of patience in, in the run game. Um, and the quarterback willing to take it on when take the ball, put it on his shoulders, put, him, put the team on his back, and, and really push the ball down the field. Um, he has some great keys when you think of the receivers. Number two, definitely if you go to sleep on him, he'll beat you over the top. Number one, the line, the uh, the tight end, definitely strong. Is that Tavin Toombs? He's definitely one of those big guys that once in the middle for that tight end pop pass, always open. He wants to give us sure-handed young man as well. And as a sophomore at six foot five, two hundred. 
220 pounds, he was essentially made to be a tight end. Definitely so. Looking forward to seeing this young man's name you know, later on in the seasons, later on in the year, um, and seeing what he can produce as a senior. Very good. So wrapping up our Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram pregame show, we've got two minutes, 40 seconds left till game time. We're getting a look at both sides now. As the Bulldogs are about to take the field. Flood the Freddies, it says. And here they come. Taking their lap around the field. Homecoming night. Dan, as a high school football player, do you remember your homecoming days? What was that energy like? Oh, that that, that was one of those games that you just kind of look forward to every year. It's usually one of, from a competition, um, one of your backyard competitors, you know, foes. You guys really went at it hard. You know, you wanted to be able to enjoy your homecoming dance the night the night of, the night after, whenever we had it. You, you want to be able to come away with the victory, not for just your brothers, but for your whole school. For the whole school, that whole community, definitely so. And the Bulldogs' energy starting to roll. We will take a quick break, and we will be back for kickoff. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. Cutter with the OH report about to kick things off. East Knox Bulldogs taking on the Fredericktown Freddies here at East Knox High School, Chet Looney Stadium. Freddies getting ready to get things underway. Wingard and Brayson Davis back to receive things. And we are underway. It's a squib kick on the ground, picked up around the 35, took across the 40, continuing to break tackles, and finally brought down around the 47 yard lines. And that's where the Bulldogs will begin. Taking a look at the starters here Jackson, Lester, Blake, Elliott, Aaron, White, Brayson, Davis, Caden, Wingard, Briar, Householder, Derek Field, Devin Garrett, Alex Dolby, Lane, Lashley, and Peyton Finch. Starting things off. And Jackson Lester back at that quarterback position. 56 for 109, a 51% completion on the season. Puts Elliott in motion. Two guys to his left, two wide receivers wide right. Hands it off to Elliott. Elliott breaks through, pushes across 50 yard line, brought down around the 40. So that will be a First down, first and 10 on the Freddies 40 yard line. The defensive starters now Gavin Toombs, Clint Parker, Cameron Coble, Devin Witt, Elijah Roush, Lane Warner, Trevor, Trevor Bellman, Kirk Parker, Grant Hartley, Dalton Lang, and Carter Mull. Lester puts Householder in motion again, hands it off to Elliott, breaks through the hole there, one-on-one -on -one with the defender who just pushes him out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Same plays, back-to-back. It's -back. not broke, don't fix it, you know. Um, definitely, like I talked before, patience, showing that patience in the hole, breaking up field. And really early on in this game, asking a question of this Fredericktown defense. Got to stop us. 
And Lester with two wide receivers wide right. Householder on the right side of that line. Hands it off again to the right side to Elliott. Pickup of maybe one. So finally they find some stop to the progress. Receiving the play from the sidelines. Play clock kicking at 15 now. Lester with wide receivers on his left side this, si this time. Elliott on his left hip fakes the handoff, throws it. Intended receiver there, Caden Wingard, but broken up by the line. The defensive line there has good job getting those hands up. Defensive line play 101. Can't get to the quarterback. Get your hands up. Stop the ball. Stop. That was exactly what we saw there, doing a really good job of just getting his hands up. Somewhat of a reaction play to knock that one down, but it works all the same. Third and eight. The Bulldogs on the Freddy 24-yard line. Already early in this fourth quarter, threatening to do some damage. Moving those receivers once again. Lester snaps it, hands it off to Elliott, dukes out the, wide the linebacker on the edge, pushes all the way to the five-yard line and brought down. So first and goal now, Elliott takes it all the way to the five. A huge pickup of about 20 yards. Definitely following those two guards right up the hole, being patient. They did a really good job of just making things easy for him. And a quick play takes it up maybe a yard, if that. Just wrapped up by those linebackers. Forward progress rules him down. Second and four. Now staying in that formation, Lester looks at his wide receivers to the left and fakes the handoff, takes it himself, crosses the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the play, takes it to about the two-yard line. Looks like we're going to have a holding. Another look at that, what made that possible was that hold, I believe, on number, like number 55. There. Number 55 on the hold, it's Alex Dolby. That'll back him up 10 yards, so second and 14. Lester again moves the line. Elliott on his right hip. The snap. Handoff to Elliott. Elliott jukes out a linebacker. Pushes forward. Taken down around the six-yard line. Pick up of about eight or so. Third and eight. So they will be down on the eight-yard line. Just sliding through that hole to grab a couple extra yards. So, Dan, are you starting to see the Freddies making adjustments to this run now that they're seeing it in person? Yeah, so it's like one of those things I think uh, East Knox is going to keep doing it until you stop it, and then they're, they're slowly getting their arms around it. And fakes a handoff. Again, throws it through the line, almost intercepted by the Freddies. Number four, Elijah Roush, quick to get on that one, but just slipped through his hands. Look at the replay. He had an idea of who he wanted in the middle, but just tipped and almost intercepted. Lucky. Gavin Toombs got in there, got his hands up. He couldn't get to the quarterback. Caused that play. So Gavin Toombs, Freddie's doing a really good job on that line of keeping things in front of them. And Lester, the snap. It's a pitch out to Elliott. Continues to fight, trying to break yardage. Crosses the five-yard line. That was fourth and eight. So that will be a turnover on downs. Great stands for the Freddies. 
And so a really big pickup, and you said that they were starting to make those changes. I mean, this is really kind of the momentum boost they need in a game like this. Definitely. Keeping, keeping the play in front of them, squeezing it down from the outside, um, allows them, allowing those linebackers to come in and make a play. And they will begin on the five-yard line. So on the five, Sipes snaps it, takes it himself, following a blocker, gets into the secondary, moving parallel. He has room. He's crossing his own 30, crossing the 50 now. Defenders all the way, taking him down at the Bulldog 40-yard line. So a huge pickup. And so some smart running there, just following the blockers, looking at the starters for Fredericktown, Blake Sipes, Sipes Trevor Bellman, Elijah Roush, Grant Hartley, Brody Davis, Gavin Toombs, Cameron Kolob, Devin Witt, Blake Green, Blake Tucker, and John Burns. So down at the 42, we've seen a lot of dual threat purpose from Blake Sipes so far with three wide receivers to his right. He moves to his left, finds a hole, brought down. Looks like he was bumped down for a pickup of about two yard lines. Two yards, I'm sorry. Now the Freddies back to the line. Seen a couple of QB rushes so far from Blake Sipes. One, a big pickup. He has a man on his left hip and three wide receivers to his left. A handoff to Elijah Roush and brought down around the 35. Pickup about five yards. Nice play with the offense. Hat on a hat in the hole. A lot of that running back to get in there and spin ahead to get some positive yards. It was a big fight to even get the yardage that he could. Going back to the same formation, Sipes with Roush on his right hip, this time hands it off to Trevor Bellman, but there's a flag in the backfield, a false start, will back them up, make this third down a bit more unmanageable. Just off too quick on that snap. Now the Freddies make their way back to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers left. This time, Roush on his right hip. This time hands it off to Roush. Finds a hole, pushes off the blocker. Brought down around the 37-yard line. It'll bring up fourth and about three. Looks like they got everything back that they lost with that penalty. So, so maybe cost them a down there, but they are right back. It looks like they are going to go for it on fourth down. So we saw the Bulldogs fail to convert on fourth down. This time with better field position, the Bulldogs would take over. But the Freddies looking for this big fourth and five substitution being made. Now two wide receivers to his right, one to his left. The snap rolls out, looks to pass, throws it over the middle. Looks for number one, Gavin Toombs, but just bounce, bounces off of his chest. He had two defenders around him, but it would have picked up the first down instead. It is a turnover on downs. Definitely had, had him wide open there on that corner route. And it almost looked like he had another intended receiver there on that play. Just below, yeah, number it was 83. Believe so, yes. And now Elliott will take, or Lester will take the field once again with his Bulldogs. White on his left side. The snap, hands it off to White. White slips right through for a pickup of about two or three. Dan, after a couple of 
Turnover on downs. What do you, what improvements do you think they're going to be trying to be making for both sides? I mean, I think East Knox are going to continue to do what they're doing on the offensive side of the ball. Until the Freddies can stop it, they're going to keep pushing the ball on, on the corners with the sweeps. And some movement on the defensive line. Snap not made, so looks like they might have been trying to pull them off sides, but receiving a new play, eight on the play clock, just now transmitting that play. Lester with three snaps it, handoff to White, to counter, brought down, stuffed at the line of scrimmage, pickup of about one. So defensively, the Freddies are definitely um, putting another man in the box, going to make East, East Knox put the ball in the air. So another linebacker in there for them. And do you think that's been doing it so far? Do you think it's been making that difference? It's allowing them to take on those blockers and, and have those linebackers fill in and make plays. And so Lester looks to his left, finds Householder. Householder runs, gets up, picks up a first down, crosses the 50-yard line, taken down around the Freddies 48. So a successful pass to Breyer Householder, the first successful pass of the night. We've seen a couple of passes earlier get broken up by that defensive line, putting their hands up. This time a little better result. Wingard and Davis to Lester's right. White still in, the handoff to White. He's got room, but pulled back. Pickup of about three, so it'll be second and seven. No score so far, so you know this Freddie team. You can't let the record deceive you. Three and four and two and two in the conference, but they are still competing very well with this Bulldog team early on. Second down now and seven for East Knox. They'll come to the line of scrimmage. They don't want third and long, so they need to make some now with two linebackers. The snaps look out to the left. A quick throw, a hard throw to number nine. Caden Wingard just wasn't ready for it. They just put a lot on that one. And likely the speed that the pass needed in order to get there, but just wasn't ready for it. Danville is leading 16 to zero over Centerberg in the first quarter. A quick update on that front. And now Lester with White still in. The snap rolls out following White, trying to move parallel, finds room forward, brought down around, looks like the 33 yard line, if not wrapped up there, he likely would have had a touchdown. Definitely so, he would have been still running. Showed great patience, let following his blockers around the end. And as a young quarterback, I'm sure it can be tempting just to try to make a move and get out of that backfield. Yeah, definitely being patient, and he's learned that very quickly. Now Lester with wide receivers on either side of him, fakes, throws towards the sideline to number four, Brayson Davis. We'll see if they call that a catch. No, they do not. Incomplete. Second and ten, it will bring up ball on the 34-yard line. Freddie's 34-yard line, second time tonight, the Bulldogs have been in Freddy territory. Nice defensive play there, utilizing the sideline as another defender, squeezing that route down. And truly giving him no room to breathe, no room to come down with that ball. Not at all. Now Lester with two wide receivers left, hands it off to White. White slips inside the line. Small hole pickup of about five or so will bring up third and five. Look at the player spotlight. That is our player spotlight. Aaron White, 58 carries, 310 yards, one touchdown and 42 tackles. We see a lot of variants of how they use those running backs between Elliott and White. Davis to 
almost drive by drive, they'll sometimes switch out. And a handoff to White once again and hit hard by the Freddies and stuff to pick up maybe two or three. Another look there and just smashed at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by number 70. Cam. Taking away the outside and then stepping in and, and finishing the play. Not afraid to put his body on the line, clearly. That was Cam Kolob, senior 5'10", 265 pounds. Now Lester getting their play. White on his left hip, two wide receivers, wide left. Lester, Lester looks to throw, runs, taking it himself, just trying to get across, trying to get that first down. And I believe he does. They marked him short, it looks like. And they do mark them short. So no, 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 no. we'll see a quick replay. And he has to get to the 31. Push there. Looks like he might have stepped out. Second effort. Looks like they're going to give him the. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. It's like he had a nice second effort of trying to get that first down, but felt came up short. Wow. So another turnover on downs for the Bulldogs, and that'll bring Sipes in the Freddies' offense back in. The game very competitive so far. The snap looks out to his left, a low throw picked up by number three, number two, and face to face there, brought down around the 35. It was a hard hit. It was Grant Hartley on the reception. Quick screen throw, pushes forward and just smothered there. Now back to the line. One receiver to the right side. Sipes under center, pushes forward himself. Gets the first down. All they needed, kind of reminiscent of the Jalen Hurts Philadelphia Eagles play where they try to push him into the end zone. Definitely. Well, low man wins when you have that type of play. You know, offense, you get as low as they can, get underneath those shoulder pads of the defensive line and move them back. And even... Blake Sipes setting up very, very low on that one, receiving the ball under center, and it pays off for him. First and ten. Three wide receivers to his right. Elijah Roush on his right hip. The throw once again to Hartley. Quick inside, but breaks the tackle. The pickup of a couple, maybe three on the reception for Grant Hartley. Great effort by Grant to break that tackle. That young man coming from that left corner. Pretty much had him did the rights. I'm sure it can be really easy to panic seeing a defensive back coming in like that, but continues to fight, breaks that tackle. Fifty seconds and a running clock left in the first quarter. No score. Man in motion. A handoff to Bellman. Bellman cuts through the middle. Brought down for a first down, it looks like. Pickup of about eight. And so smart running by Bellman to abandon that outside, trying to run outside of that scrum and just taking it directly inside. The right guard pulled and cleaned it up for him, opened that hole so he can get those positive yards. So shout out to Cam Colble, the right guard there, making that play possible. And once again, Bellman in motion, another handoff. No, this time Sipes takes it himself, takes it across the line of scrimmage, pick up of about two, and that will expire the first quarter, come back second and eight on 48-yard line. Bryce Coder, Dan Scott with the OH Report. You're watching High School Football live and free. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. 
now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Bryce Cutter with the OH Report here, looking at Fredericktown as Sipes takes it himself, brought down around the line of scrimmage. Perhaps a tackle for a loss. No, instead, no gain. So third and eight so far, no score in this game. And looking at the record, for the Freddies, it could deceive you, but this has been a really competitive game so far. Definitely, we got a defensive battle here. These guys are playing tough in the trenches. So man in motion, Bellman in motion, fakes the handoff to Bellman, but the pressure's right there. A throw on his back foot to Gavin Toombs. Gavin Toombs breaks the tackle. A quick hurdle brought down around the 25-yard line. So a pickup of about 26 yards on a fantastic throw from Blake Sipes. Had almost no time to react, but found a man on his back foot. Sipes def kept that play alive, finding Gavin. Like I said before, once that young man gets his hands on the ball, he's definitely turning north to south. Danville leading Centerville 22-0 now in the first quarter. Huge pickup there from Gavin Toombs. Looks to throw again, tries to take it himself, but brought down in the backfield. Not a successful result this time on the pressure. Brought down for a loss of about four. That's a sophomore, Dan. I mean, Blake Sipes, is this something that impresses you? Is this, is this something that you're looking forward to in future years? So yeah, you look at these young men, and they, they learn the different skills of the game that apply to their positions and really put their, their efforts into making great plays and being patient back there. You, you hear me say that a lot. That's one of the keys to the game, being patient. And patience is key so far for both sides of things. Now the snap, Roush on his left side looks to throw. It's a deep pass towards the sideline, but it's intercepted. Intercepted by Jackson Lester. So the Bulldogs quarterback doing himself a favor on the defensive end of things. Hung that out there just a little bit too long. Allowed the, the free safety to break underneath it and, and get that interception. So with that throw, what was it a sound throw or maybe his eyes were too big for his stomach on that one? What are you thinking? I think he just didn't quite think that that free safety could get over from that hash and make a play. So some great athleticism from the Bulldogs then. Yes, sir. Now Elliott with two wide receivers to his left, or Lester with Elliott on his left hip, two wide receivers left. That's Wingard and Davis. Wingard this season with 10 catches, 221 yards, two touchdowns in the slot receiver. Brayson Davis, 28 catches, 372 yards, and five receiving touchdowns. And a penalty flag is down before the play. They will move back five yards. Looks like a delay of game. So first and 15 now. As Lester looks to start his drive on the five-yard line, his own five-yard line. Looking to give himself some breathing room. The snap takes it himself, finds a hole in the middle, and it will be positive yardage. Pickup of about five. And so second and 10 now. So essentially a loss of down. Second and 10. 
Quick hard count. We'll receive the play now back to line of scrimmage in that three-point stance. A handoff to Elliott. Elliott busts through, and it takes three guys to take him down right around that first down marker. It might be a yard short. Second effort, second effort, got that. Eight, eight yards there. And just not accepting defeat on that, keeping the, the feet moving, right? And uh, takes it himself. Elliott again continuing to push forward. Brought down around the 39-yard line. Elliott back on for this drive has been running mean the past couple of plays and trying to catch the defense out. Elliott takes it himself into the safeties, brought down around the 38-yard line. So inside of Freddie territory, but this has been familiar so far tonight. The Bulldogs not able to convert, getting as close as the five-yard line before eventually being stuffed. So getting behind those two pulling guards. Making positive yards, driving the ball up the field. And a timeout being taken now by the Freddies. Tune into the OH Report podcast every Monday, now starting at 7.30 and taking you all the way up to Monday night football at 8.15. Find out where we've been, where we're going, interviews from all areas of the sporting world, and your first look at the weekly phenom and top plays to vote on. Now a quick timeout as the Bulldogs back onto the field. And back up to the action. Lester fakes the handoff, rolls out to his left, jukes out the linebacker, brought down, trying not to get taken down in the backfield, will end up picking positive yardage. Pickup of a few. Carter Mole slow to get up, I think just frustrated with the result of the play. Two wide receivers to his right, quick hard count. Relaying the play on again now, Elliott on his right hip. The snap, another handoff to Elliott's been working for him so far. Continuing to push forward, breaks two tackles. Again, it's taking three guys to bring him down. Nothing but drive and determination there. Those two guards pulled for him, opened up the hole on the outside, gave him the opportunity. And Blake Elliott, a junior, 5'11", 195 pounds. Handoff again to Elliott, this time met in the backfield. Number 55, Alex Dolby with the tackle for loss. And Dan, the key to Elliott's success so far, has it been size, pure power, has it been finesse that you've seen? What I'm saying is there's a lot of determination. That young man wants to make positive yards. Gets behind the, the shorter pads of his linemen and really moves the pile. Good call out. Luke Holsinger now in at running back as Elliott might have been in a bit of discomfort. Looks to his right, Lester does, finds Wingard. Wingard fights with the cornerback, pushes forward. They call it forward progress. I think that's another early whistle. We saw one of those last week. Another look at that. Wingard with the stiff arm gets wrapped up and brought around. Dan, do you think that's forward? I think that young man still was should be running. <laughs> yeah, so we saw it again last week where they robbed, I believe, Breyer of the touchdown. This time, the early whistle costing Wingard the touchdown. And now hands it off to Holsinger. Holsinger slips inside a bit more speed all the way into the 10 yard line, brought down around the six for a pickup of about 11 yards. Holsinger, 5'9", 155 pounds, a junior. Definitely got skinny and got through that hole, making for great forward progress. Bit speedier than Elliott, but Elliott having that raw power. 
The snap, another handoff to Holsinger. Holsinger dips inside that tackle once again. A pickup, maybe a couple there. Pickup of about three, so that'll bring up third and five familiar territory. We saw this in the first drive of the evening where the Bulldogs made it all the way to the five into Freddy, Freddy red zone. But all the same, it was that turnover on downs as the Freddies put, put up a big stand, looking to do the same right here. Elliott's back in the game. Lester takes it himself, but stopped right around the two-yard line, three-yard line it looks like. Lester hit hard on the tackle for loss. And the Freddies do it again, bend but don't break. Very determined so far. That's Alex Dolby with the half tackle. Now with two receivers to his left. Lester in the backfield. Elliott in front of him. The snap. Hands it off to Elliott. Rolling outside. Jumps. They think it's a touchdown. I think he might be short. And they do roll, rule him short. So a pickup of about three but it will bring fourth and one. And so a huge scenario now for the Bulldogs looking for their first score of the night on homecoming night. A quick handoff to Elliott, pushes all the way in and no doubt about it, Blake Elliott with the first touchdown of the evening on a one yard run into the end zone. Nice drive put together there by the Bulldogs. Patient running, tough running. And what I'm impressed with is they didn't get frustrated, right? You know, they're playing a team that they, in theory, think they're better than. And, you know, five minutes left in the second quarter, this is their first score. They didn't allow themselves to get frustrated. Yeah, definitely definitely played to their strengths, which is the run game, um, and didn't allow those short. And a snap, but penalty on the play. Offside, so... Probably about a half yard pickup, if any. In the snap, the kick is up, and it's good. So the Bulldogs leading this one 7 to 0 over the Freddies with five minutes left in the second quarter. You're watching high school football live and free on the OH Report. At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Bryce Coder with Dan Scott here with the OH Report, always live and free on the OH Report. Another look at the one-yard touchdown run from Blake Elliott following those blockers all the way into the end zone virtually untouched, leading this one 7-0 over the Fredericktown Freddies. Now the Bulldogs getting ready to kick things underway. We are underway, a deep kick. Received by Grant Hartley. Grant Hartley around the five, wrapped up and brought down around the 20 yard line, perhaps a bit before, and that's where the Freddies will begin. And so after that score, you know, Fredericktown stayed in it. What, as a coach, what are you telling them, their defense? It's only seven points. It's, it's, they, it's just the game. We, we're, we're, the game's still on. We're well in. We're well in it, as the Freddies would be saying. If I was the coach of the Freddies, letting them know that hey, we're still in this. And a quick handoff to Roush. Roush makes some good yardage, but brought down a pickup of about six. Now second down. Yeah. 
And second and five, Freddie's ball on the 26, it looks like. Own 26 now with wide receivers to his left, one, two to his right. The snap, it's a low snap. Decides to take it himself. Sipes running backwards a bit and just decides to bring himself down. It'll be a huge loss on the play. Loss of about five. Peggy Forshe saying, let's go Bulldogs, but Brenda Harris saying, go Freddies. Sandy Martin saying, go Dogs. Leave us a comment at the OH report. Hashtag fan zone. Sipes fakes, looks out to his right to throw. Again, intercepted by Lester. His second of the evening takes it to the two yard line. Does a good job of just creeping on that route and letting it develop and steps right inside for the interception. Back there playing center field. Allowed himself to break on that ball. Just a bit overthrown. And as that defensive back, your specialty, Dan, those broken up passes, 26 in a career. Yeah, when, when, it, when the ball's in the air, you got to think of it as yours. And if it's not yours, then definitely the other team is not going to catch it. <laughs> Very much so, and doing a good job. Lester back in at quarterback after making the second interception of the evening. Looks out to his right, looks to throw, finds Wingard. Wingard catches it, jukes outside. That cornerback continues to push forward all the way down to about the four-yard line. Wingard with the big pickup earlier. Should have had the touchdown, but ruled dead early. And a bit of hurry up from the Bulldogs as they move back quickly, trying to overwhelm this defense. White in at halfback. This time getting a play. Another one of those quick hard counts. Second and about one. The snap, Lester takes it himself, trying to follow those blockers. Will get the first down. Maybe even the touchdown, and he does get the touchdown. So some great fighting by Jackson Lester. Picks up the interception, and only two plays later, picks himself up the second touchdown of the evening. Second effort by the entire offense. Just doing a good job of pushing him forward, not accepting defeat. I think that's kind of been the common theme out of the runners for the Bulldogs so far is not accepting defeat on these runs. Yeah, the, the runs runs after contact, you know, the run after contact, yards after contact. These guys are definitely putting them up. And now Bulldogs leading 14-0 to zero over the Freddies. 2.40 left in the second quarter. You're watching high school football live and free on the OH Report. Bryce Cutter with the OH Report coming back to you live here in East Knox, Ohio at East Knox High School. Bulldogs taking the lead 14-0 over the Freddies. Dan Scott with me on color commentary tonight. Look around the KMAC and around our network. St. Paul Flyers leading the Crestview Cougars 14-0. Northmore leading Mount Gilead 21-3. Blue Devils leading the Trojans 22-0 all after the first quarter. And so a long flag throw on the play. And a cannon from the referee. So taking another look at this, at what it could potentially be. So the Freddies move back. 
looks like a definitely a block in the back. So a block in the back, you know. It, so a block in the back, is that, you know, a silly mistake, or is that like a technical error? Ha so when, when the numbers, when you can't read the gentleman's numbers, that's when they always tell you, you turn away, don't, don't take that shot. Um, so perhaps just slipping his mind there a yeah. bit and saw a hit and took a hit. Caught up in the urge of the game. Very much so. Great insight. 2.34 left in the second quarter. Bulldogs leading 14 to 0 over the Freddies. Sipes takes it himself, breaks a tackle, but no, wrapped up around the ankles. A huge tackle. Will Jensen with the tackle, likely preventing a very big pickup. Sipes was quick to get outside. It looked like he broke the tackle, but wrapped him up at the ankles. Now three re receivers to his right, man on his hip, hands it off to number four, Elijah Roush. A short pickup is going to bring up third down. So down 14-0, we'll see. They will try to get a score in before the end of this half, third and two. Freddy's on their own 21. They'd have a lot to make up. Only two timeouts left to their name this half. Now under center, Sipes. No, instead, it's Roush pushes forward. Sipes was under center. It looked like it was going to be one of those plays where they push him forward, but instead he just turns around, hands it off for the fullback rush. And so it is a first down. They do rule it a first down. So the clock still continuing to move, but the Freddies not seemingly having any urgency to get back to the ball. Sipes with Roush on his right side. Again, hands it off to Roush. Roush fights through the line, breaks a tackle, and wrapped up and brought down by Jackson Lester. It will be a first down, though. Nice run play there. Followed his block, number 70 up in that hole. Cleared the way. And then again, as we talked about before, yards after contact. We have seen that that is making and breaking this game, making all the difference, and you know, for both sides. Three wide receivers wide to his left, hands it off again to Roush, brought down, probably short, but around the line of scrimmage. So 25 seconds left and running in the half. And this, if the last play wasn't the last play of the game, or of the half, this may be, this will be the last play of the half. Three wide receivers wide to his right. Once again, puts a man in motion. The snap four on the clock, hands it off. No, takes it himself. Sipes breaks outside, has some room, pushes for the first down, but the half will come to an end. The Bulldogs leading this one 14-0 over the Fredericktown Freddies. Coming up, we've got the marching band show, halftime stats, analysis, and more. Bryce Coder with Dan Scott on the OH Report, always live and free. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience.
take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. was a number five hit on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 in 2002. This chart is by the rock band Jimmy Is the World to take you back in time. Here's the middle.
2000s from the alternative rock band Fallout Child. As you reminisce about the past, we'd like to say thanks for the memories. by director Sarah J. Kira, assisted by Elizabeth Sheriff, Brian Dodd, Nisa Lucky, and Olivia Campbell, and led onto the field by Field Commander Miley Erlo. We are excited to present our show, a tribute to Elton John.
released back in 1971, focused on John's piano playing and acoustic guitar. The lyrics simply speak of love. We hope you enjoy, don't, bleh, we hope you enjoy your song, but featuring soloist Colin Baxter. was another collaboration for Ellen John and Bernie Talpin. With an upbeat tempo and in-your-face lyric, this song is bound to pump you up. We hope you enjoy our closer. I'm still standing.
it up for the Eastock Marching Band. We would like to thank the Eastock Board of Education, the Eastock Fan Boosters, and our school for all their continuing support. We would also like to thank our sponsors, the Knox Community Hospital, Ellis Brothers, Park National Bank, BFW Post 4027, Boy Scout Troop 344, and Josh Bell with the Howard Youth League. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Cutter with the OH Report here with the Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Halftime Show. Taking a look here, the Bulldogs taking a lead 14-0 over the Fredericktown Freddies, but those scores came late in the second half. Five minutes left in the second quarter, eventually picking up the first score of the game on a one-yard touchdown run. From Blake Elliott looking at the stats for both sides, Fredericktown Five first downs, 38 passing yards, 75 rushing yards for a total of 113 total yards. Two turnovers, zero penalties, and zero penalty yards. Looking to the Bulldogs now, seven first downs, 32 passing yards, 175 rushing yards for a total of 207 on the game, nearly doubling the, Freder uh, the Fredericktown total. Zero turnovers, three penalties for a total of 25 yards. This game, Dan, certainly more competitive than we expected, but we saw the Bulldogs start to break away a little bit. Is that what you were seeing? Yeah, definitely see them you know, taking, taking, taking over the game. Um, really, really, really um, focusing on that outside run game, um, and then again yards after catch, yards after contact. Uh, definitely, you know, leading the way with those two pulling guards that are opening the holes, massive holes, for the running backs. So a shout-out, really, to the offensive line for making this run game possible is what you're saying. Yeah, these two these two guards, number 51 and 55, I think it is, they're definitely um, putting their nose. Devin Garrett now. To the grind and making up some, making some big holes for the running backs to, to fill. Great call-out, and Devin Garrett. Six foot eight, 310 pounds, a big boy playing that left tackle and the nose guard position for the Bulldogs. Certainly make, made his presence known tonight. But on the other side of things, we see several broken up passes on the attempted throws from Jackson Lester, broken up by guys like Joe Burns, Blake Tucker, but eventually finding his way into the end zone. He has two interceptions as well to his name, really having a game for himself tonight. About to get things underway, the Freddies will receive the ball to start the second half. Will Jensen kicking off a high one. Drops around the 15, picked up around the 10, running through, brought down around the 22. That is where the Freddies will begin things for the second half. Dan, in the locker room at halftime, you know, you have 20 minutes to make adjustments. What does Fredericktown need to do, not only to get back into this game, but limit what the Bulldogs are doing? Really, really trying uh, ball control. Definitely look at ball control. Look at taking, taking away, taking what Knox is giving them. Uh, they're giving them the middle. Um, so they got to focus on that. And a bit of trouble with the snap, but Sipes makes something of it. Pickup of about seven, so third and about three. 
So when I say give them the middle, I'm talking about, you know, tight end pop passes. One of the things that they're is that part of their forte as far as the Freddies are concerned. Um, definitely still trying to t take on those swing passes. Um, had a hit, had a few that were wide open. Um, came up short, but just stay persistent. So short passes likely being the key here for the Freddies. Two wide receivers to his right, one to his left. Sipes takes a snap, hands it off. A couple pick up there. Was number four, Elijah Roush, the fullback. And so it will be a first down. Now Freddie's back to the line. Three wide receivers left. Roush on the right, the left hip of Sipes. The snap fakes handoff, throws it to number two. Grant Hartley brought down. I think in the backfield, and he is very frustrated with the result of that play. Nice catch. Had it made that move on the inside to try and open up his, the path for him to to take it to the outside there, just the defender got there a little quicker. So, you know, really not much reason for the frustration. A great play by the defense. Yeah. Just getting in front and bringing him down. And so second and 11 now. Another look with the three wide receivers wide to his left. This time puts Bellman in motion, takes it himself. Sipes immediately wrapped up. Looks like it may be another loss of a w one yard. We're calling it no gain, third and 11. Freddie's on their own 32 yard line. So this will likely be a heat check for the Freddie. See if the momentum truly is in their favor coming out of the locker room. They have to get something going here. Now Sipes with wide receivers on either side of him, two on the left, two on the right. So a brief pause to remark the ball. Again, two wide receivers left, two wide right. Bellman in motion, looks to pass across the middle. Pressure from Householder finds Bellman. Bellman continues to fight. Not going to be enough for the first down, but it is a pickup. There's a flag on the play. And it looks like it was a personal foul against the Freddies. Another look at that here. Maybe we can get a better look from the angle than from the booth. And so hit and pushed out of bounds. I'm not sure where the foul occurred. What are you thinking, Dan? Looks like they're calling it on the offensive lineman number 70, um, blocking the back going out as the play was going out of bounds right there. Ooh, so there it was, the block in the bl back against number 70. That's Cam Cobalt. We've seen a lot of his pressure tonight, breaking up a couple of passes on the line, but mental mistake there with the block in the back. And so some discussion being had, fourth and 11, punt team comes onto the field. Fourth and six for the Freddies. I'm not sure the ball was not moved, whether or not the play was declined. The snap and the punt. It's a high one back to Brayson Davis. Brayson Davis runs outside, crosses the 40-yard line, and will run out of bounds at the 45. And that's where the Bulldogs will begin on their own 45. Good return to set the offense up for decent field position. And so as a defensive player, Dan, is it? do you think it's possible to create that momentum on the defensive end that gets them back into the game? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely defense can, can set the tone of a game. You know, if you've got some defense alignment and linebackers that are filling holes, defensive ends that are cracking down, crashing down, taking away those swing plays, um, definitely they can also bring, put their team back in, into the game. So just, you know, solid execution can really make all the difference for the offense coming back onto the field for the Freddies. Two left. One on the right side. 
And now the snap, Lester looks out to his left, finds Brayson Davis on the completion, runs past the blocker, first down, pickup of about 13. Just a simple swing pass there to an open receiver. Allowed him to get up upfield and get 13 yards. And now Lester with Elliott on his right, two wide receivers out wide to his right. That's Camden Wingard and Brayson Davis totaling for over 40 catches this year over the head of Davis. Throw over the middle, incomplete. It's going to bring up third down. Had a man on that quick post just a bit outside, just a bit away from him there, just out of stretch hands. So open receiver and likely would have been a big pickup, but throw not on target. Now the snap, looks out, finds Davis once again. Wingard, the push, a block, continues to push forward around the 30, crosses the 30, brought down around the 29, called a first down, pickup of about 12. Nice swing pass there. And so, you know, we have seen that the Fredericktown defense frustrating the offense at times, the running game, but we're seeing them start to open it up on the pass. Looks like Frederictown has brought another man inside the box. Pretty much going a one on one on the outside, um, allowing Knox to have these extra passes. And Elliott, the carry, continues to fight, pick up of about four. So that strategic decision to go one on one, what are they banking on here? Are they banking on their corners being strong enough to seal that down? What are they looking to do? That best, that's what it is. You know, you, we're going to put your best against our best and, and may the best men win. So they're looking at putting those corners on islands out there. Um, and hopefully they can take away the, uh, the passing game. Great insight there. Now Lester, handoff to Elliott. Elliott finds a hole, pushes a blocker, sees some daylight, brought down around the 11-yard line, a pickup of about 10 or so. A late, late, late flag on the play. And back in the flag goes. I'm not... Sure what that was about. And what, are they saying no foul? Unsportsmanlike conduct looks like. Oh, unsportsmanlike conduct. So we gotta keep her cool. Keep her cool guys. Still in the game. And the snap. Elliot pushes forward another touchdown. His second of the evening, a pickup of about 11, will put the Bulldogs leading this one 20 to zero over the Fredericktown Freddies. Great run play there, great run play. He needs to buy those two offensive guards lunch. <laughs> And doing, you know, a lot of the work for him and largely just following those blockers, right? They're, they're opening up the holes for him. And he's just cruising through. And now the Bulldogs' extra point is good, leading this one 21-0 with 7.15 left in the third quarter over the Fredericktown Freddies. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report.
Bryce Coder with Dan Scott here in Howard, Ohio, East Knox High School as the Bulldogs extend the lead 21 to zero. Kickoff is away, received around the five yard line, making forward progress, pick of about 15, 20 now. Another flag on the play. against the Freddies. It looks like maybe a block in the back, the second one of the evening. Going to push him back and cause him to fight. Start with some negative yardage. And so not great field position, not doing themselves any favors here. They'll switch out the football. Fredericktown starting on their own 11. Also available on our network, St. Paul beating Crestview 27 to zero. Northmore leading Mount Gilead 28 to three at halftime. Danville leading 38 to eight over Centerville at halftime. The snap takes himself, Sipes. Maybe no gain, I don't think. Elliot, a good job of blowing that play up and just reading right inside. There he is, filling the holes, like I said, that, that outside linebacker there. He's just stepping in. Filling the hole each and every time. And, you know, defensively as a coach, I mean, is that something you go over? Is that more like an instinct thing? That's an instinct. Hey, having a nose for the ball, that's what they call that. And a helmet off the play, a deep ball, incomplete. It was about a 30-yard pass from Sipes. Heck of a pass, heck of a touch. It just, just a bit outside of the reach of his receiver. And that was Carter Mole, the wide receiver, just having trouble with it. On that last play, there was some contact at the line that resulted in a lineman losing his helmet. All seemingly seemingly okay, third and 11. Freddie's on their own 11-yard line. But there will be a timeout, I believe, called by the Fredericktown Freddies. Every week, our resident stat nerd, Travis Berardi, brings you the area stat leaders presented by Spitzer Motors of Mansfield. The area's top passers, receivers, rushers, and new this year, touchdown leaders. Every week on the OH Report Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget tonight at 1130, it's the Friday Night Pigskin powered by Knox Community Hospital. Brian Skaronski and company will break down all of the OH Report games with highlights, all the area scores, conference standings, interviews with coaches, and so much more than just more. It's a Friday night pigskin powered by Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Other games available on tonight on the OH Report Network. Plymouth at Lucas, Seneca East at Mohawk, St. Paul at Crestview, Northmore at Mount Gilead, and Danville at Centerburg at YouTube channels 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 respectively. We will have... Highlights also available for Hillsdale at Wayndale and Galleon at Pleasant. So bringing us back to the action, Sipes with Roush on his right, looks to pass, looking out deep, finds Hartley. Hartley continues to fight. Looks like it may have been a first down, but perhaps ruled just short. And it will bring up fourth down. So as you were saying, Dan, some of these short passes coming to fruition. Yeah. It looks like they gave him the, the uh, gave him the first down because uh, it looks like to me where, where his feet came down with possession of the ball, he was definitely had the first down. So you, you you got the quarterback swinging out, just a simple hook pass. And, you know, doing them really wonders, not really having much answers for this defense on the run side of things. Sipes takes it himself, following a load of blockers, pickup of about four yards, bring up third down. 
the second down, I'm sorry. So a five yard pickup will bring up second and five. So perhaps some life from the Freddies as they're beginning to experiment a bit. Wide receiver is on either side of him. A low snap and Sipes Balls jumps loose. right on top of it. And Fredericktown keeping it. Another look at that. A low snap. I don't look like nobody really had possession yeah, of that at the end of the play. Say, it looks like they, they blew the whistle before possession was even. And so perhaps another mistake. That's the third early whistle we've seen in the past couple of weeks. And now Sipes with Roush on his left, snaps, looks out to his left, rolling a quick throw, finds Hartley. Forward progress. Forward progress, it looks like it's going to give him the first down there. So we will see Jackson Lester doing a good job of getting in there and just blowing things up, stopping things so it didn't turn into more than it was. Just short, looks like going to mark the ball just short. Fourth down. So a big fourth down. And it is so, so close. We can see the first down marker right behind that referee. Another look at this. A throw and just pushes him back. And a quick snap, tries to push him forward. The whole team running in to keep him back. A huge scrum pile on the ground. The Bulldogs think they have the turnover on downs. Freddie's thinking they got the first down. And they said the Freddie's not happy about this, but I believe they're calling this short. They may bring in the chains. It's too close to call. They got to bring the chains in and check this one. And still some discussion being had. Referee going over to talk with the Fredericktown sideline. They're bringing the chains out. So the official coming from the far side looked like he, where he was coming in at, that they had achieved the first down. It's so, so close. And a deep breath as we get results. Just short. And they call it short, so a turnover on downs. It would have been a huge pickup first down or a fourth down conversion for the Freddies. But again, with great field position, the Bulldogs will take over on the Freddy 32-yard line. That's a tough one to lose. And now with Lester, looks like White on his left, fakes the handoff, looks to the receivers. Number four, Brayson Davis over his head all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. A fanta fantastic throw from Jackson Lester. Brayson Davis doing a great job of just staying with it, going up and coming down, and he was clear all the way into the end zone. Just a simple go route there. The young man ran and caught the cornerback looking inside. There it is. Right over the top. And that one-on-one -on -one scenario that you were talking about earlier in the game, this time Brayson Davis getting the better of the cornerback and it converted. Definitely a nice nice play there. So the PAT is up. And it's through. So East Knox leading this one 28-0 with 4-13 left in the third quarter. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. 
now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Bryce Coder with Dan Scott here on the OH Report. East Knox Bulldogs picking up a big touchdown. Brayson Davis on the reception from Jackson Lester. Lester having game of a lifetime. Two interceptions, a rushing touchdown, and now a passing touchdown to his name. Kickoff is up. And taking it all the way across the 30-yard line, continuing to fight, breaks a tackle, brought down around the 33. And the Freddies will begin a frustrating drive last time. Nice run there by Grant. Another look at the pass and just burns the cornerback. Cornerback struggling to even keep up with the ball and all the way into the end zone, clear by about three yards or so. And so an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Fredericktown. I believe that's the fourth personal foul penalty against the Freddies tonight. Can't afford to lose your composure in a game like this when you're trying to fight from behind. And this game isn't necessarily out of reach. I mean, we've seen teams like Danville score 54 in the first half, right? So this is still a game that's winnable for the Freddies. By no means. They're just putting themselves behind the eight ball there. So four penalties, 35 yards for the Freddies in this half. And so the Freddies will take over on the 16. Sipes has a wide receiver to his left, two to his right. Sipes hands it off to Roush. Roush fights through that secondary, but wrapped up and brought down a decent sized pickup, brought down around the 25 pickup. About nine or so, eight or so, to bring up second and two. Got to keep fighting, team. Got to keep fighting. Find a way. And as a coach, I'm sure you're looking at moments like this. Who's still fighting when all hope seems lost? Who's the one who is putting in the most effort? In the snap, a handoff caught up at the ankles. Brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Elijah Roush brought down. Defensive end pinching down there. Got across the line of scrimmage, came flat, went and broke to the t to make the tackle. And with three men on the defensive line, are you impressed with the presence they've had so far? They're doing a great job controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, they're pinching down, uh, or if they're not doing that, they're actually extending the play on the outside. Um, forcing them to try and go go wide. And now the snap rolls out to his right. Sipes takes it himself, takes it for maybe a yard, gets close to that fourth, or the first down marker. Another, I believe, fourth and one. And we saw some success earlier with that QB sneak where they pushed Sipes forward, this time bringing on the punt crew. And so at this point, is this something that you expect? You know, we've seen them go for it all game long, but with the clock ticking in the third quarter, going to punt, what do you think? Definitely got to uh, give yourself a chance um, by switching the field position. That will help you a little bit. Um, it did make them go a little longer than what they've been going, you know, when it comes down, comes down to it. That is a great point, you know, giving up really good position to these Bulldogs. We've seen it on two of the failed fourth down conversions, so perhaps that is the good move, just get it to the Bulldog side of the field. Exactly. You can't keep allowing them to have positive field position when it comes to 
to go switch to offense. And now the snap, the punt is up. Brayson Davis Good back punt. to re receive. He will just let it go. The Freddies down it at the Bulldog 39, where the Bulldogs will begin. Taking a look at some of the other scores. St. Paul leading 27 to zero at halftime. We will get an update at the end of the third quarter from the other games. And now Lester hands it off to Elliott. Elliott running out to his right, pushing all those guys forward, breaking tackles, brought down right around the 46, I believe. Elliott sitting back there directing traffic pushing his linemen in where he wants them to be so and so he can continue up the field. And as a powerful runner, we see him as a powerful linebacker. How much do you think his running ability informs his ability on defense? I think it just transfers from one side of the field to the other. Absolutely, and now Lester hands it off, this time to Householder. Householder, the big body, trying to bully his way through towards that first down marker. So I said before he had a nose for the ball, and that's definitely what he what he's showing there. And quickly trying to get back to that line, see if they try that hard snap again. Two wide receivers to his right, Elliott on his right hip, and they will try the hard snap. Now receiving that play, 15 on the play clock. Playboard goes up. Householder in motion, the snap, looks to his right, a quick throw to Brayson Davis, just off his fingertips. Could have been intercepted, but instead incomplete. It's going to bring up third and five. Nice slant route there. Ball just a bit out of his reach there. So Brayson Davis, one of Lester's favorite receivers, over 30 catches this year in his sixth receiving touchdown of the season he gained tonight. Another quick hard snap, 45 seconds left in the third quarter, third and five. The snap, hands it off to Elliott. Elliott fights, gets the first down and more, brought down around the 30-yard line, a pickup of about 11 yards. Now on the 31-yard line, is where they will begin. They're breathing down the neck of that Freddie red zone once again. The snap hands it off to Elliott, doing what works. Finds room outside, continues to push, wrapped up around the ankles and brought down around the 12-yard line. And so clock stopping, ball marked down at the 11. Nice tackle, nice, nice saving tackle there by number 21. Really, truly saving that play and saving this drive. The snap looks out to his right, finds Householder, catch complete, brought down right around to the six yard line. That will likely be the last play of the third quarter as the clock expires. Bulldogs leading this one 28 to zero over the Fredericktown Freddies here in Howard, Ohio. You're watching high school football live and free on the OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience.
Bryce Cutter with the OH report as the snap is off. Householder takes it himself. Maybe a pickup of a couple there. Bryce Cutter here with Dan Scott joining me on color commentary. Dan like Scott, former defensive back for University of Urbana. Looks like we had a uh, direct snap right there to Householder who took it to over the right side for three yards. Likely just banking on his size and power to run it home, right? Yes, sir. In the snap, Elliott receives it, wrapped up at the ankles, just brought short. down just short. We'll see where they decide to mark it, but running into that pylon, knocking it over, likely down before then. So very, very short on the one-yard line. Another handoff to Elliott. All the way into the end zone this time, successful. Now leading 34 to zero over the Frederick Town Freddies early in the fourth quarter. And so after some early frustrations for the Bulldogs where they thought they likely had chances at the end zone, finally in the second quarter, establishing that lead. But here in the second half, it's been all Bulldogs. All Bulldogs, and definitely, you know, those two guards are, are escorting Elliott down the field each and every time. Right, left, opening holes, um, allowing him to achieve those positive yards. And a flag on the play at the snap. So an offsides call declined. And now with 34 seconds left on the clock after the untimed down, it will be a running clock. 35-0, the Bulldogs leading this one over the Fredericktown. Freddy's running clock when we come back. You're watching High School Football live and free on the OH Report. to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be live and free always. Knox Public Health, Amato's Wood-Fired Pizza, Amato's Mount Vernon Open 2017. We strive to create new, exciting dishes outside the norm. Crown Chrysler Dodge Deep Ram. Come see how we are pancaking the competition. Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Holman Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and bath, windows and doors since 1970. And Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day. And some fighting here at the kickoff, but the Freddies will begin right around the 20-yard line after the kickoff. Running clock here, or in theory there should be. We'll see after this snap if they do keep that clock running. 10.56 left in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs leading this one 35-0. And so goes the running clock. Sipes with Roush on his right side. Two wide receivers left. Looks to pass a jump throw to Gavin Toombs, the tight end, a late flag on the play. And he was an ineligible man downfield. I believe that was number 70. So Gavin Toombs likely not covered up by a receiver. Saw that 
in last week's game, the penalty called against Breyer, both had a similar situation with the ineligible tight end. And number 70 just getting a little eager to get down the field and help his teammate out. Now the snap looks to pass once again. A deep throw like, oh, this one incomplete. It was number two, Grant Hartley doing a great job as that likely would have been an interception. So rolled out to the right, threw the ball all the way back to the almost to the left hash there, but great play by Grant, keeping keeping it out of the hands of the out Bulldogs. of the hands of the defense. Exactly. Now nine minutes and running with three wide receivers to his right. And a time out, I believe, being taken. Yes, a timeout taken by the Freddies. Tune into the OH Report podcast every Monday, now starting at 7.30 and taking you all the way up to Monday night football at 8.15. Find out where we've been, where we're going, interviews from all areas of the sporting world, and your first look at the weekly phenom and top plays to vote on. Of course, as always, every week, our resident stat nerd, Travis Berardi, brings you the area stat leaders presented by Spitzer Motors of Mansfield. The area's top passers, receivers, rushers, and new this year, touchdown leaders, every week on the OH Report Facebook and YouTube. So after the timeout, the Freddies are down to just one. Trailing in this one, they can still fight, potentially, you know, pick up a score, have something to, you know, hold on to going into next week, you think. Yes, for sure. They definitely uh, need to, to show that the offense you know, can move the ball. And handed to Roush, moving the ball indeed is what they're doing here. A big pickup brought down just short of the 30. Just, uh, just as I said that, they need to be able to show that they can move the ball. Because offensively, they can move the ball, be it on the ground or it through the air. But they just got to be patient, keep hat on a hat in the hole, and give those running backs hose to squeak. Through. Really trying to string those plays together. I mean, we've seen big plays from Fredericktown, but not really finding a groove for him so far today. Yeah, definitely got to, like you say, string them together. Um, can't can't have a little bit here, a little bit there. And now Sipes looks, but has pressure and pushed out of bounds right around the 25-yard line, so a loss of five yards. And so we saw that look where they were pushing him forward earlier. But this time a handoff, handoff in fact to Sipes. Danville leading Centerburg 46-14 at the end of the third. The snap looks left. Number two finds Grant Hartley, re received it, pushes forward, gets the first down, and even more. Nice effort there by Grant. Went up with his hands, pulled the ball down, took a good shot, and still was able to get positive yards. As a football player, I'm sure your reaction, you see that guy coming in, but how do you just stay with it and you know continue battling through all that contact? Just, just focus, utilizing your hands, securing the – Securing the ball, that's the first thing you need to do. Secure the ball, then absorb the whatever punishment they're going to deliver, and then turn and deliver your own. And that's exactly what he did, fighting for more yards on a couple of occasions of contact on that play. Three wide receivers wide to his right. S Sipes looks to throw, finds Grant Hartley once again wrapped up. Perhaps a loss. It looks like it might be a fumble. The Bulldogs think they have it. And they do have it. Bulldogs taking over on the fumble. Grant Hartley having trouble with it right around the line of scrimmage. See who picked that up. It was like. Blake Elliott. And then Lester actually picking it up, I believe. I 
I mean, and you've said it time and time again, but Blake Elliott, very on it, hard hitter, and this time coming up with the forced fumble. Showing the nose for the ball, definitely again. Hands it off. White takes it this time. Continues to push. Hit hard. He fumbles. White's in pain. Picked up around the 20 yard line. Looks like they're going to call him down. They're going to call him down. Wow, we'll see the replay here. It looked like the ball came out long before he. Ball looks like definitely to be out prior to that. And so White catching a break there from the referees. On the 32-yard line, the Freddy 32, two wide receivers wide right. Elliott hands it off to White. Same play, continues to push forward. So maybe a pickup of a yard or so. Bring up third down. Now getting some more scores. Northmore leading Mount Gilead 28 to three at the end of the third. Now Luke Holsinger in at that running back position. Two wide receivers wide right. A flip Reverse. back to Householder. Householder finding room, but brought down hard. I believe it's a first down. Second time they run that reverse with an inside handoff. And successful this time. But no, they will say that he's short instead. So fourth and one scenario. Ball on the 27. Looks like they will go for it. Holsinger still in at that running back position. Four minutes, 45 seconds in running. Householder brought back. Handoff to Householder. Householder punished at the line of scrimmage, but I do, we'll see. He looks like he's gonna be a bit short. We'll see how they down it. Some discussion amongst the referees. Like they're bringing the chains out. They are bringing out the chains once again. They do stop the clock in this occasion. Chains coming out. We've got a good angle on this one. A couple of players walking in front of the shot, but we should be able to get somewhat of a look. And it is short. So Frederick Ram Fredericktown will take over on the 27-yard line. Defensively bend, but don't break. Way to save it. Way to start come up strong for your team there and get a change of possession. And is that what you're looking for to kind of build that momentum, these big stops here? Yeah, just like I said before, you know, defense to me always win games. And when your defense can go out there and on fourth down stop, a team that's been able to move the ball all day, you know, that's saying something. <laughs> and so looks like there will be a quick hydration break timeout by the Bulldogs. We will quick take a quick break. Bulldogs leading this one 35-0 over the Fredericktown Freddies. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Yeah, it's the comeback. Are you ready for the comeback? 
Bryce Cutter with the OH Report here with Dan Scott on color commentary here in Howard, Ohio. Bulldogs leading this one 35 to zero over the Fredericktown Freddies. Freddies have the ball on their own 27 yard line. This one handed off, but having some trouble with it. Ends up collecting it, picks up a couple, probably about four yards there. It's Elijah Roush, the fullback on the carry. Placed the ball on the turf and, and Knox was quick to converge. Able to pick it up. It would have been heartbreaking, really, to lose another fumble like that. Second down and six. One receiver to the left. And now Sipes, the snap, hands it off to number three, Trevor Bellman. Bellman tries his chance at it, pick up of a few. Nice hole created there by the offensive line. Nice cutback right there. A look at that, really doing a good job of using his body to shade the defender away from the ball carrier. And with 3.15 in running here in the fourth, Freddy's with Sipes under center, hands it off to Bellman, fighting for the first down. Looks like they're going to give him the first down on that play, second effort. So it will be a first down. Someone limping, Parker Kimball, the outside linebacker for the Bulldogs, hobbling a bit. Sipes once again under center, takes the snap, hands it off, runs it forward. Number 25, that is Jordan Moore, the sophomore running back. Number 25, five foot nine, 200 pounds, getting his chops late in this ball game. Parker Kimball coming off now, they're hobbling. Be replaced by a fresh linebacker. Elijah Snow now in at quarterback. Not recorded a throw this season. Hands it off, continues to fight. Pickup of about three or so. Clock now inside of two minutes. Jordan showing some great tenacity there, fighting for extra yards. With that body size, I mean, 5'9", 200 pounds as a sophomore, he's probably got a lot of hope going for him in this program. Yeah, I bet he's pretty bottom heavy. <laughs> that low center of gravity keeping him up. Now Elijah Snow, a pitch out to Jordan. Tries to fight, picks up probably about two on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down. So some substitutions being made for the Bulldogs. They're likely subbing on their remaining strings, trying to get them some reps in the ball game. We always talk about that, about how late games, we get some of these second, third string guys into these games. How much of a difference does it make for those young guys to get in on those snaps earlier in their so career? I used to be one of those young guys, and there's nothing like the feeling, you know, being able to – get in and have real time game experience, um, you know, contact with somebody other than your teammate. So it, it's definitely um, grassroots there when you think about it. So it, it, truly a great opportunity for these young men. And now with 20 seconds, some looks at the comments there. Go Bulldogs, chew them up. Michael Arrow said, Ryan Vetter said, let's go Freddy's. So that will be the last play of this ball game. Darwin Thompson, Brenda Harrison, go Freddy. And that will be the end of the game as the East Knox Bulldogs pick up a big win here at home. They're going to move to five and three on the season. The Freddies moving to three and five. East Knox continuing to vie for that top spot in the KMAC. It looks like they will retake it if Northmore loses, or 
I'm sorry, no, they will be tied next week with Northmore. Northmore likely picking up the win here. The end of this game coming up soon. We've got the post game stats, MVP interview, analysis, and more. Are you ready for the comeback? At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. sponsors for allowing us to be live and free we'd like to thank knox public health in amato's wood-fired pizza amato's mount vernon open in 2017 we strive to create new exciting dishes outside of the norm crown chrysler dodge jeep ram come see how we are pancaking the competition knox community hospital in the community for the community home and kitchen supply your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths windows and doors since 1970 and Kilbuck Savings Bank community banking it's what we do it's who we are every single day coming up next we've got the MVP interview with the one and only Jackson Lester are you ready for the comeback at the Kilbuck Savings Bank you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience.
Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Bryce Coder with the OH Report here with the Omato's wood-fired pizza MVP player of the game, Jackson Lester. Jackson Lester had a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, two interceptions, and a fumble recovery to his name. Congrats, Jackson. Thank you, thank you. So awesome game so far. We saw those two interceptions. I mean, you were right on it. It was a conversation that we were having in the booth. Is that instinct or is that something that you just learned from that offense? Um, our coaches are always on top of it and giving us what their best looks are and us just repping it in practice, so by game time, it's just instinct. And so a difficult loss last week to Northmore, really coming out again and asserting yourself. Any prospects or hopes for the rest of the season? What are you thinking? Um, K-Max, a tough league. Any day, any team can win, so you got to come out and just set the tone. Very much so. And with that, uh, with your touchdowns, you know, we saw that took a little bit of uh, work to get to that first touchdown, but eventually getting 
to what was it in that huddle or those timeouts or the time in between quarters that your coach said to you that got you going again? Um, our coaches are pretty much just telling us, like, do what we're taught, do our thing, trust the guys beside you. Definitely asserted yourself picking up a big shutout win tonight. Anyone you want to shout out? Uh, I got to shout out the OH Report guys and my brother and sister-in-law are getting married tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you very much. Congrats to your brother and sister there. Jackson Lester, our Amato's wood-fired pizza MVP player of the game. Thanks and congrats, Jackson. Thank you. Are you ready for the comeback? At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Cutter with the OH Report here with the Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram postgame show. Bulldogs picking up the win over the Fredericktown Freddies 35-0. Bulldogs going to be moving to 5-3 on the season 4-1 in the K-Mac. They'll be tied for a second along with Northmore. Fredericktown Freddies moving to 3-5 and 2-3 and and on the season in the K-Mac. Looking at some stats here. Fredericktown, nine first down, 61 passing yards, 104 rushing yards for a total of 165 yards, three turnovers, five penalties for a total of 45 yards. 
Now looking at the Bulldogs, 11 first downs, 83 passing yards, 274 rushing yards, a total of 357. No turnovers, three penalties for a total of 25 penalty yards. Bulldogs going on to face Loudonville next week here at home. The Freddies will go on to play Cardington at Cardington on 10-13. I'd like to thank everyone for being a part of this. I'd like to thank Adam Thompson, our director, Brandon Powell on cameras, Nick Coder on stats, Dan Scott as color commentary, and myself, Bryce Coder, tune in tonight for the Friday Night Pigskin with Brian Skaronski and crew. Be safe and have a good night.